Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am in the studio today working on my recycled Reader's Digest um, altered book journal. So if you're just joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so that you don't miss out on uh, future videos. So I have uh, created a playlist just for this project and I will put a link in the description so that you can watch from the beginning if you're just catching this for the first time. I was anxious to get started working on the inside of my book, All the Fun Stuff. So I didn't do this on camera. I had been last week or two been watching um, a new discovery for me, um, Eva at Bohemian Crafting. I had never seen her before and I absolutely love the way she teaches. I love how creative she is. Uh, I love her style, and her videos are just so much fun to watch. She's been doing this for a long time, and I am very new. Uh, I think she's the queen of tucks and pockets and all that kind of stuff. So I had watched a video that she did, and I will put a link down below for how to do this mechanical sort of card, and I just love that. I had been wanting to learn how to do something like that, and she popped up um, with just the nicest video, so calm to listen to. Um, she kept it really simple with tools and measuring and all that. She just kind of had it be an enjoyable process. So I hope that you'll watch her video. I'm going to attempt to do a little demo of this just because you might want to try it out. And that's kind of why I didn't get to uh, do all this on camera because this was a first time for me and I, I knew I would probably be making mistakes and taking a long time and all of that. So um, I will do one um, that I wanna show you how to do this. Um, but like I said, she's the expert, so please watch her video. Um, so for mine, I did it a little bit different than, than her video. Uh, Style-wise, obviously, is, is, our styles are very different. and. I, I like to get ideas from people because I'm so new at this. You know, sometimes I come up, well, a lot of times I think I'm coming up with an original idea. I, I, I can't watch everything out there to know for sure, but if I've thought something up, I'll say that. And if I um, got an idea from someone else, I will also say that because I don't know if she invented this or not, but that's where I learned how to do this. So I tried to do a little a little bit different um, and I think I want to do more of these because I just love the whole mechanical part of it. And I'm hoping that I come up with even new different ways of doing of doing it and putting out my own personality on it so I don't feel like I'm just copying someone else's work. So I appreciate her so much. I hope she doesn't mind that I'm sharing this. My demo is going to be a little bit different than this, but you'll get the idea. So you need a few pieces. Um, this is just a piece of cardstock. Um, so I have cut a piece that we'll start with. And then you need a, for me, um, she hadn't done this. Her base was a separate piece of, I can't remember if it was cardstock or just paper. Uh, but I decided I wanted my base basically to be my book page so that I don't have too many layers. But I wanted a decorative piece inside. So I'm going to today use for my demo this vintage piece of music sheet. It's going to be glued down because it's already... You know, I've cracked it already and broken it, but it's gonna all get glued down anyway. So I've uh, just used my vintage photo distress oxide to age the edges, and then I just did some walnut stain splatters with the distress ink. So I've prepared that for my little background here. And then for this paper, this the one that's painted here, I am gonna use a piece of hand painted paper. It's not from the batch that I just did for this project, but I think the colors go fine. Um, and I liked the weight of this paper. To do just book page might be a little thin. Um, so I wanted something just a little sturdier because this is gonna be what's folded and kind of moving um, this part here. This one is thicker than book page because when I had, <clears throat> excuse me, when I had made my hand painted papers, I did some of them on a hammer mill, I think 32 pound uh, weight paper. So that was a little bit better than trying to do this maybe with just a flimsy little book page. And then I don't have my embellishment or card or anything that I'm gonna put on the top. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but 
I'll, I'll show you how that's gonna go together using this one. And then you just need a little strip um, for the bottom. So I think what I'm gonna use is, um, this will be my, this will be my, my part here. And then I had to cut a strip uh, off of that. So I may use that as my little um, folded part or I could use this as my little folded part. So I'll, I'll show you when I get to that point. So I've cut a um, four inches by six inches because that is the size if I do wanna use it in this book on say this blank page. I wanted to cover the words. I like seeing the little title and I like seeing the number. So that made it about four inches wide by six inches to cover the words of my book page. So you can make yours whatever size you need, but that's what my brain was saying I wanted to do. So this is my part that's gonna I'm gonna pull on. So I liked it to stick up, and she did hers the same way where it sticks up a little bit above this. So I can have this go whichever direction I like, but I think I kind of like it this way. So I wanted the bottoms lined up. This will stick out the top. And then I'm gonna just fold these two sides around. They're gonna be glued down um, and you won't really see that whether they're the same or not. So you could use a um, scoreboard and do it exact or you can see that I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So it just goes like that. So then this part will slide in and out. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I need to measure um, my little cuts that I'm gonna do here. So I think I want to, I'll take that out for a second. I'm going to do, I think she might have done hers three quarters of an inch. I don't remember now. It's been a little bit since I've watched her video. So I'm just going to do mine, I think, half an inch. That way I have a nice size opening. So I'm just going to lay my ruler here at half an inch. And then I want to leave half an inch at the top, too. Um, I could just do this kind of with a knife, but I think I'm going to just maybe draw a line where I'm going to cut with, my, with a pencil. So... I'm leaving a half inch on the top and a half inch on the side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm measuring the half inch and then I'm gonna start a half inch down. And you can't really see my lines very well, but I'm gonna cut just those lines to that point, to that where I'm leaving a half inch at the top. So you can do it. Uh, with a cutter or I'm just gonna use scissors here. To that half inch. I don't know if you can hear that loud bass in the background. I apologize if you do. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, there may be a concert venue nearby and it's making noise. Actually, you know what? I do know what it is, and I just, I'm just i missing out where there's a block party going on um, up the hill. I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what it is. They must have live music there. Okay, so this is going to go... Oops. In here. Okay. And I want to also... I'm going to fold here, and then I'm going to need to fold here. So I think I want to do that half inch fold also. So where's my ruler? And again, if you have a scoreboard, you can do that, but I think I'm going to just maybe make a line with my, see if I can just do it. like that. Okay, there, and then at half inch. There. And then I'm gonna fold this in half here.
So that is going to be my little kind of mechanical part. So as you can see, if I just stuck this down to my book page, I'm going to see this little edge here, which if it's decorative, like in my case, it's painted, that would actually be okay. Um, but I want to put this in here, I think, and I, I didn't measure this before I, so hopefully it'll kind of cover it, but I think that'll be fine. So I need to um, make it be the right size. Oops. Well, that kind of helped me right there, didn't it? So I think that'll, I'm just going to glue that in there too. if that makes sense. So I think I'll be able to, um, in a perfect world, it would have been a little bit wider, but I think I can probably get it stuck down enough. So I'm gonna just put a little bead of glue inside there to hold, to hold it in. And I think that'll work. Okay, so this was the part that she did not do in her video, but I think it's easier to do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do that, if I wanted to do any distressing on this, I should do that now too. So I'm going to take that out for a second and just use some of this because I think it's easier to do it now. And you could always do some variations, you know, like if I wanted to do any stitching on this, you know, I can put this through my sewing machine and maybe I'll do that because I want to kind of make mine different, you know? Um, so I think I'm gonna do that. I'll pause you here for a second and, and do some stitching on here, I think might be kind of fun and then I will be right back okay so I am back and I have done some three lines all wavy I did them around this edge not obviously you don't want to sew here you just I need my pocket to be able to go in and out so I've just done three wavy lines uh, around here and then I did down here also on that half inch, so it's kind of all framed. So I need to trim off my, my little strings. And then if I do a little of my, this, it'll darken up my thread. So I use kind of a gold thread so you don't see it very much. Black would have been nice, but I didn't feel like changing the thread in my machine. So I have a little border there. And then I also want to do something to this. Now I could even maybe round those corners. Would that be cute? Round these little corners. That might be cute for something different. So I'm going to use the small one, I think. So I want to get this edge again, my little corners. And then I'll want to do the bottom corner of this also with the little one because it might show. And then maybe something decorative at the top might be cute. She does some of this in hers and I thought it's really cute. So don't crease it, but just bring those corners together. And then just with the scissors, kind of do a, a cute little file folder thing, sort of shape. And then because I'm liking to do distressed things, I think, and this is kind of a trick too, I think when you don't cut it really smooth, as smooth as, you, as you'd as you like, 
just take a scissors or maybe you have a little paper distressor thing and just kind of shave that a little bit. Just shave that edge of the paper. I'm not gonna do the sides, I just really want just the top. And then this is gonna show when you pull it, um, when you pull it out. So you could actually, in my case, I put a little, um, a little sentiment up here, and I actually did it after the fact, so you could do it now or later, but I am gonna go ahead and distress my card because to me, that's another little place to journal or to um, put a poem or a picture or something like that. So I may add that to mine. I'm just not sure how that, I'm not sure what page it's going to go on or how that page is going to be decorated yet. So I think I will just do the absolute part that I need to do, which is this part. Um, and then I can always add, you know, glue something to the front of it later. And it's not going to show all the way down. It's going to be tucked behind something. So just kind of dirty this up a little bit. And you could, you know, decoupage on here. You, there's all kinds of things you can do. That could be a decorative card, you know, that's just a surprise. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that because that's going to pull in and out of the, out of there. And then later on, I can add a cinnamon or something if I want. Make that a little dirtier. Okay, so I have that, and then this needs to go in the back, get glued in also. So I think I'm going to try, 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 since this is not quite as wide as I need it to be, I'm going to try to very carefully get that attached to these two. So I'm just going to put glue on the edge of my paper since that is what is needed. And I don't want to glue it to that. I need that card to be free flowing inside. So I'm just going to put a tiny, just on this edge, because this can all get glued to my book later, but I just want it to be attached. to that, oops, to that little flap. So this is actually my background. And now my card would go in like this. And so all I need to do now is I need to glue just that half inch, just this half inch to the bottom of my cardstock. So I'm gonna put glue on the flap so that I only have it where I need it. Okay, and then I have to decide which of these I want to use for that little part, um, for this little part, because when you pull this out, you know, there's your surprise, but it tucks, it tucks down inside there. So it's either this one and I can decorate it up. Let's see, fold it in half. Like so and you can make this you know whatever you could have it be thinner I don't think it has to be that thick you know I think you want it at least a half an inch so it covers up that little you know bottom piece but it could be shorter than this kind of depends on what you want to put here I think 
So I might actually make it a little bit shorter. And I kind of thinking I might just want to use this scrap that I had. I think I kind of like that. So let's see. If I fold this in half. Or it could be a totally different coordinating piece. I don't know. But I kind of like that. So I think I might trim it down a little bit. For one, I just need it to be my four inches wide. And I think I might trim it just a tiny. So now this is one inch. So it's two inches by four inches and folded in half. And I kind of like that. That way I'm covering that half inch and then just another half inch. Okay, so I think I want to, I could stitch this too. Might be kind of cute. I think I'm gonna round my corners. Oops. And my bottom corners too. And then I'll add something to this later. And actually, I think I'm not gonna, eh, let's see, do I wanna stitch it? Do I not wanna stitch it? I think I'm gonna end up putting a saying or something here, and I may layer it with some different things. So I can do my stitching on that, I think, is what I might do. And you can always even make this a little decorative edge. I don't have any little cute scissors here, but you could always do that, or a torn edge, or you know anything like that. So it's going to operate this way. Um, I'm going to decorate it up a bit more. And then on mine, I think on hers, she had done like a card. So if, let's see if I have a card or something that is a size of a card. Let's see. Let's say I'm going to do this circle. If I was going to do this circle, I have to make sure that it's not glued to this fold or interrupting this fold because otherwise when I go up like this I don't want this in that fold unless whatever it is is folded but I think that wouldn't look good so you want to just have glue to one side like this so in my case I have a bird so my bird is only glued on part of its body, if you can see the back. So I, I needed to keep my bird within that crease and that fold on the top. Otherwise it won't operate. So depending on what you do, I think she had done a card there. I thought it would have been cute. I don't have any here, but if I had my, um, some Tim Holtz paper dolls, that might be kind of cute where it looked like they were standing or sitting behind here and then you pull it up you know, and they're, they're just here. So make sure you don't glue whatever down. Like if this is, if I want this centered here, I would just glue this half to that seam and then it would go like that. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna put here yet. That'll have to be a surprise for later, but at least you see how the mechanics of this goes. So I could actually go ahead and glue this little flap on here uh, because I think whatever I do to it later will be just glued on the front. So then I will have kind of a completed pocket. Then it's just a matter of, you know, whatever decoration I decide to add. So I'm only putting glue on these ends, you know. I'm, oh, it's just getting glued to these two little flaps on the front. If I can get them lined up correctly, that would be good. Okay, so they're glued just here. And then you can go ahead and glue this. I have to be careful because this paper is torn here. 
So I don't want to put glue all over this. I think what I'll do is just do it around this edge and not worry about the bottom. So I can get all here. But I'm just going to do this top edge so that I don't accidentally glue my card stock in. Okay, now I have another little pocket that's ready to go somewhere in my book. And then I can finish decorating it up. I just love these. And you can do side ones. I had started to do a side one, but I was using just book page and it's a little flimsy. So, um, but you know, you, you can have it go the other direction too. So I just, I'm just hooked on these. I just think they're great. I just love them, you know? A little fun thing. I've even thought it would be cute. Maybe you don't put anything on the front, but maybe this is a window too. I don't know. That might be kind of weird. We'll see. I'm going to have to come up with some of my own original ideas using this type of mechanical thing. So that is my, how I did that. Oops, how I did this one. Now I will show you just kind of the rest of the little things I did since I didn't do them on camera. So to, I made my pocket, but I didn't want the rest of my book page showing. So I just used some scraps. This little piece here is actually the cutoff piece from this. Um, so I have that there. And then this is just a little piece of washi tape that is like a little calendar. And so that's stuck down there. And then on this side is, I've been saving some of this, um, strip it's like from a spiral brown book i'll pull the pages out um after i've painted them or something and then um this is just the little strip that you tear off you know so i've been saving those just kind of they kind of remind me of like a movie reel kind of thing so i've been saving those um and just adding those as a little detail and then this is, um, I've used this here, here, and another spot I'm going to show you, another little thing. Um, when I was watching Eva's videos, she had, um, in passing, and I can't remember if it was in this video or a different video, but she had mentioned making your own wax paper. And she had said there would be a link below, but I, it wasn't there. So I thought she had said paraffin wax. So I thought, well, I'm just going to try it. It can't be that hard. Later on, I did get um, a recommendation for another one of her videos, and it was wax paper, but she had used like wax furniture polish, you know, in the can um, to do it. So I don't know if that if there's another video out there. I couldn't find it when I looked in her on her on her page, but I just did my own little attempt at it. So I took um, some book page and some. This is vintage music paper, and then I did it also in my book. I, I wanted to try it because I had done um, resin paper before and I had done, uh, you know, embossing with clear embossing powder, which I'm using in this book too, just to kind of give you a thicker, uh, different feel and finish and durability. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went to Michael's and I bought some just plain old paraffin wax. You may have like a, a white candle or something. This just doesn't have any dye or anything in it. Um, and just broke off a, a chip of it. Um, and that's what I use. This is just a little tiny piece I had left. But all you have to do is so easy, is take your, um, a piece of book page like this. This one, this one has some paint on it. So I'll do it maybe on the back side a little bit. But all I did was just kind of start rubbing the wax. You feel it a little bit, but your paper's cold, so not that much comes off. But when you take your heat tool, It'll kind of heat that up and start melting it. Let's see if you can see that I did have some on there. Not very much, but that's just gonna kind of melt into the paper. So once you started heating it up like this, this will now go on much easier. And you'll be able to start seeing the color change so you just kind of keep adding the wax until you and heating it until you have 
um, it'll kind of absorb in the paper. On painted paper, on the painted side, it won't so much. Uh, but I was just doing some different experiments to see how it would look. But as it kind of starts, you can start seeing through the paper a little bit. I don't know how well this is showing on camera. Um, but you can kind of see the color changing. So I'm not gonna do this whole thing, you get the idea. Um, but it does make it more durable. So you would just keep doing this until you get it, as much wax in there as you want. So I had done it on um, a little scrap that I was trying out that goes wraps around the back and on this little button. And, and it worked. Um, you can kind of see through, uh, it, it gave it a different texture. You could kind of see through the words from the other side coming through. So I also uh, glued this on. I was trying to see, you know, now that I've waxed it, it's two slick surfaces, How, what kind of glue do I need to use? And my art glitter glue worked fine. Um, it just took a little longer to set up than it would if it wasn't waxed. So I did that there, and then I did this little tuck here is w with some um, vintage music paper, which is what I used on the back of that. And this is so brittle that, you know, it's really hard to use this paper unless you're just gluing it down in collage. But to use it as, as a tuck, I needed it to be more durable. So um, the wax helped that. And then um, I also used the wax idea on the edge of this pocket. If you'd watched my last series, I had taken an, and made just a pocket out of uh, two book pages just glued together. Um, and this one, I need to put more glue, obviously. It doesn't hold as well because it's waxed. You know, this side is the same thing. So what you have to do is use plenty of glue. I'll put a little bit more on there. And then use like a clamp. I have these little bulldog clamps I like to use. And that reminds me to let it dry, you know, before I'm playing around with it. So I'll put a clamp on there so that I don't, I don't forget again. And we'll just clamp that on there. So uh, anyway, so it, it, I think is kind of just a fun, different feel. It changes the color a little bit and you can kind of see it's, it makes it a little translucent. So I kind of like that. Um, okay, so for my bird, um, this was just one of my hand painted papers that I had made um, on hammer mill paper, not on book page. And then for the bird, I just went online and I found a, um, a free copyright free bird that I could print out. And I wanted to alter it a little bit. You know, it, I didn't want it to just look like a, a photocopy. So I actually did this one first and I really like how the color turned out on this one. But I had cut the bird out Fussy cut it out just off the paper and hadn't put it on cardstock, which I needed to do. So I ended up having to make another one. So it might be, it's easier if you go ahead and you maybe cut out just a square, you know, cut out around it, but not fussy cut, glue it down to a piece of cardstock so that it's thicker or a couple of pieces of paper, and then do your painting and then cut it out. I found that to be easier. So to do my painting on this, just to give the bird a little bit more interest, not looking so flat, I used um, a variety of watercolors. I kind of just have to use what I have here. I don't have any watercolor pencils here, um, but I need to get some because I like using those. But then I had these Neo colors, they're water solu soluble. So it's just like a little crayon if you've never used these. I'll put links below for all this the supplies that I used. but. Um, it's just a water soluble crayon so you can just kind of put a little bit of color where you want and then use a, a wet paintbrush or a water pen like this um, and it kind of will move the crayon around and blend it so it kind of just gives you that little watercolory kind of look and I've done other things um, I did a butterfly like that which I don't know what I did with my butterfly um, that I'm going to use future in this book. Uh, where'd it go? But same thing, same idea. I, I photocopied just on paper and then I wanted it to look a little more hand painted. So I did the same thing. This is just with the Neo colors. Some of my 
uh, vintage photo and uh, then just drying it. So I'll do more to this uh, so that you can kind of see. But it, it started out like this bird and obviously I didn't think to put the cardstock behind there, but I think this is just gonna get glued onto something anyway. But if you want it to be a stand-up thing or thicker, then you wanna put it on cardstock. So um, hand painting, whatever you wanna do. I used um, the Stabilo All pencil to do the shading around the edge again. And then this is also water soluble. So uh, you just use your water pen and it'll kind of blend it all up, bleed it out. And then um, I sprayed it then I think with um, the sparkle, the sheer shimmer from Imagine that I love. It just gives everything kind of a little bit of a, sh a sparkle. And then I did the um, embossing, clear emboss on this just to give it that that shine and that, again, a little thicker. And to do that, I just used my clear ink and just went over the whole bird. Since then, I have purchased for here, because I didn't have one, um, these embossed pens. It comes in a pack of two, uh, the clear and a, and a black. And then you can actually do lettering and that sort of thing. And then just the clear, transparent um, embossing powder. And I like to do that. Just it kind of uh, embellishes something a little bit more. So that was what is on this page. And then on this side, um, I've taken my, I've taken a couple of, um, of my painted papers. So I took a paper that I had done some stenciling on similar to this or one with the little flowers. I don't know where I have another one. I probably need to, need to stencil another one. Something like this, similar to that one. I took a, a piece of paper and then I also used um, one of my master boards that I've cut up to make all the cards for in here. So this one and this one were one of my, and I think this, these were all one of my uh, pieces of paper that I had already painted. I think it, I'm not sure which direction it all went, but anyway, it was something like that. And I probably have another little scrap somewhere. So for these cards, um, it, I just took my painted paper. I backed it with cardstock. On this one, I used some metallic pen, gel pens, just to kind of embellish that little uh, stencil a little bit more for kind of a focal point. And then a piece of washi tape for the little tab to kind of pull it out. And then another little piece of washi tape. I think it was this one and where's the other one I used? These two I used. And then um, just on tissue, I just did another little um, You Are Enough. And I've been using uh, this Tim Holtz Tiny Text. I love all these little sentiments. So um, I'm just gonna be using them again in this journal. So that's all for that little card that's tucked here. So this is the waxed music paper. I had a little tear in it, so I cut a little corner off. And then this color that you see here on the edge, I had been using um, a piece of deli paper to uh, clean my brayer off when I was using my gel plate. And I just used some of that, you know, different colors just to bring in some of this color over here. And then I took um, an embroidery thread, my little uh, pokey tool, and just made some holes so that I could just do this little um, like shoelace kind of thing up the side. So it just kind of decorated that up a little bit. And then for this pocket here, it was a folded over book page. You can see the pocket. But then I did the little gusset inside, which is just a little piece of cardstock folded in half that's the length, maybe by, I think it, I probably did like three quarters of an inch and then folded it in half the length of this um, and distressed it and then just glued it in kind of like this. So it gives you a little bit of room in here to put plenty of stuff. So for the next one, then this card, um, again, it was part of that same piece of paper. I, I think I made three cards with that piece of paper and then used the scraps. 
another piece of that little um, strip and then a sentiment. And I think behind this, I may have put a little bit of white gesso just so it would show up uh, here because I just had put it on tissue paper. And then I stitched around the edge of this one before I glued it to the cardstock. This stencil that I had been using. So um, I kind of just enhanced it a little bit with my Stabilo All Pencil to darken up the, the outside edge because it was just stenciled on. So it was all just, you know, kind of looked more like background. So I wanted it to kind of pop. And then this is one of my watch faces. Um, I will be having some of these uh, available in the in the kit. Um, so I, I just made up a bunch ahead of time. And then I did the resin on this one too. Just it, it's attached to cardstock, so it's thicker. And then I did the resin. I cut it in half um, because I wasn't sure if I was going to fold it around or what I was going to do. But I wanted it to be like a little tuck, so I can put a little photo or something here. A little miniature one would be cute. Um, and then it had a tuck on the other side, so I used this part was already stenciled um, on the paper before I cut it up. Uh, but I put it on a piece of cardstock too, nothing fancy. And it was already, you know, already stenciled like that. So I really didn't do anything else to it. I have shown this before in my Bo Bohemian Travel Journal, um, this kind of arrow to do with a ribbon. So I won't demo it today because I don't have any more ribbon like this here. But if you take that organza ribbon that has a little uh, stripe down the center, I just use scissors and kind of just cut little you know notches in it so that it looks like a little arrow kind of thing and then where you fold it in half to loop it through here you cut away all that organza and then you can attach it so I find it easier to cut that little center part first and put it through before you've notched all this because the more you take this apart and put it together it it frays all those little edges so that's just a fun little thing that I came up with when I was doing that bohemian journal so that goes here and then I wanted um, another card because this one was kind of small for this pocket so I did another one here um, just rounded the corners I did let me take off some of this some little zigzaggy stitch on the edge another little sentiment now this one is from one of these collage papers so I wanted to show this because now you might understand why I stopped at this point. All I've done since then is add the splatters. So these have all been scanned so that I'll have these available just as backgrounds. And then you can add and collage more on top, do some more painting, stenciling, whatever. So I had just cut a piece, this piece from another one of those sheets. And then I added my um, some stenciling because I could see, I knew what my focal point was gonna be and where I might want um, some stenciling. So all of this collage was already there. I added her, um, again, she is a picture I got off the internet a long time ago when I very first started doing this before I knew I would be doing videos. Um, but I had saved her uh, and she didn't have any clothes on, but I, I had, picked this picture because I loved that her hair was a nest um, with eggs and everything and I loved the look on her face so I just took the piece of paper, took the photo and then just hand tore it around and then I wanted you can see she's altered a little bit too um, you can use what I did was after I tore her I wanted another book page or something behind her so I had been cleaning off my brayer I had two pieces just like this, but I liked that rusty color and then the white, you know, the contrast of it. So I just put her onto this book page and then tore around it again, um, just to get the shape kind of that I had. Put it on there after the stitching. And then I wanted a little bit of this turquoise color, so I used another a piece of little washi tape just to get that blue over here a little bit more, just for balance. And then she still needed more, so I she needed a dress or something. So I used that deli paper again and just tore a couple of pieces and then just glued them down in a shape kind of of a neckline. And then she still, you know, I wanted her to still kind of be soft but still 
have some embellishment. So I don't know if you can even see it in camera, but I've used some distressed mica spray. This one is called antique bronze, but it's kind of that coppery color. And I was able to spritz really slow. So it just got a little bit of spray here and a little bit over here. And then I was able to just make that drip run right down the V-neck of her. I don't know if you can see that, but I just love how that looked. So she's just kind of framed in that little metallic distress. And then these are just some flat backed rhinestones because that felt a little naked to me over there. So I just added that little bit. So it, it just, I just liked how quirky she was. And it was said once upon an island. And so I had her head cover up because the island didn't make any sense. But it's kind of like once upon a time story kind of thing, little princess looking kind of deal. And then this had said Royal Institution. So I just, those little words that I see, those kind of sometimes hint to me how I want to um, do my focal point or a composition or something like that. I like it to be like these little subtle um, connections, I guess. This little paper clip idea I got from Eva also. And it's just little curled, um, you just curl the ends. I don't have anything here to distress or I would, but I don't mind it being gold with the little sparkly there anyway. And then be your beautiful self. So um, I really like that. And then I wanted to add, because it's such a big card, um, something else to it. So I had some coffee stained paper. Um, I just tore off a piece and folded it to fit here. And then this little ticket was, um, I think the little, another little extra piece cut off from these when I did this page. So I had just a little strip of something from somewhere else. I ended up uh, gluing that, added a little stamping, and then this wish ticket, um, I got these from a friend, and this is how they looked to begin with. So I just used my vintage photo around the edge and then spritzed it with the Sheer Shimmer Spray, this one. And then I used my embossing pen and just did around the edge. That's why it looks a little darker and just the letters wish. So I don't know if you can see that, that those are sparkly and shinier, um, but that just kind of made an, another little ticket. So I'm just going to clip that there. And that is my other card for here. And then hopefully this is dry now. I'm not going to pull it apart yet. And then for my last card inside this pocket, I wanted a nice big card. So I used, again, um, this is part of that uh, master board that I had cut from um, this one. This was just another piece of it. And I added another strip of that, the stamping I had to add um, the splatters I had added. And then this uh, birdie darling was a piece of the tissue paper that this bird came from. It's Tim Holtz tissue. It's like collage tissue that comes in a little tube. Um, and this was just the only scrap I had brought with me and it happened to have this, which was a nice um, complement to this card. And then um, this is just a little layered thing. I think it started out with a, a scrap of music paper or book page, I can't even see it behind there. And then a piece of ribbon and some little fine netting and stitched it all on there, left the threads kind of loopy hanging out. Um, and again, then on tissue, the faraway places and daring adventures. So that's just a little card. Um, I needed something to pull it out so you'd know it was there. And so I did one of my smaller clock faces and for this one, I only embossed half because I didn't want to cover up my words. So I knew I was going to be gluing it to the back. So I just embossed this half and then this whole thing. And this is just a stamp that I had um, to make that little pull. So that's it. That is my first, um, my first page. And now I'm going to move on to the next one. I don't know if I'll jump around in the book or do it in order. Oh, here's my other one I was going to do. This was my attempt at doing a side pocket sort of deal. And it works. I don't have this little piece on yet. Um, it works okay, but it's a little flimsier because it's just with book page. But I probably will still end up using it because I don't want to waste it. So that may end up back here. So that's my 
thing for today. Um, I hope that if you enjoyed this or have questions, leave them in the comments and let me know what you think. And I'm going to continue working on this. So have a great rest of your day and now go make something. Bye.